Let's start looking at how the various types of synthesis produce those complex waveforms that we hear as different instrumental timbres. Additive synthesis is the easiest to understand, so we'll start with that. Additive synthesis has actually been around for as long as the church organ, since the Middle Ages. How so? Well, a single organ pipe, like a whistle or a recorder, produces a fairly pure single frequency tone. Like that. It's not perfectly pure, but it is mostly a one fundamental pitch. It's also, as you can tell, really quiet. So how do you get that to fill up a church? Well, one of the best ways to get any sound to stand out is by adding harmonics to the fundamental pitch. The way to do that with an organ is by adding ranks of pipes that are pitched integer multiples higher than the fundamental, like a 12-foot pipe for the fundamental, then a 6-foot pipe, a 4-foot pipe, 3-foot, 2-foot, 1-foot, now, adding all of those various ranks of pipes dramatically alters the perceived waveform of the note being played. Listen. Sure enough, the fundamental, the second harmonic, the third harmonic, fourth harmonic, and so on. Now, today, we can theoretically accomplish the same thing with numbers in the DCO of a digital synthesizer. The thick red line that you see here is actually a series of dots representing a hundred separate numbers that we're going to manipulate by uh, changing a sign function. Now we don't have to dive into the formula to crunch the numbers. Instead, I've programmed these faders down here to do that. And we won't actually see the numbers change like the synthesizer would. Instead, we'll watch the height of the dots change. Seen together, the dots will show you an image of the waveform that the numbers are actually defining. Here, let's try it with a fundamental A440 with the first slider, like that. Now, we'll tell the computer to create the actual sound from the numbers. And sure enough, we get a pure one frequency A440. If you see a single wave here, when you're using the first fader, how many waves do you think you're going to see when you raise the second fader? Yeah, two. And what's the frequency going to be? Well, twice A440. In other words, A880, which is an octave above A440. Listen. Sure enough. Okay, what happens when we raise the third fader? How many uh, waves are you going to see? Yeah, 3. And the frequency is going to be 3 times A440, or 1320 hertz, which we'll hear as E, an octave and a fifth, above A440. Now, we could keep on doing this and hearing each one of these as we add 4 waves, 5, all the way up to 12, But that's all well and good. But where the fun really begins is when we start adding all the various harmonics together in various strengths to the same wave. You've seen what a sine wave looks like. Here's how to make a sawtooth wave. Now we're going to start with 64 here. And then we're simply going to raise each fader half of the previous fader. So half of 64 is 32, half of 32 is 16, half of 16 is 8, half of 8 is 4, half of 4 is 2, half of 2 is 1, and sure enough we're defining numerically like a digital synthesizer, we're defining a different type of wave. This one's a sawtooth wave. Listen to what it sounds like. Buzzy, kind of like a saxophone, right? Now, we've talked before about square waves like clarinets produce. 
Here's how to make one with the numbers in a DCO. Notice that the even numbered harmonics are not going to be there. That's why clarinets overblow an octave and a fifth, unlike the other instruments, which only overblow at the octave. Now, we'll start with a hundred. We'll leave the second harmonic, all the even numbered harmonics we'll leave out. This one I'm going to set up at about 32. Leave this one out, set this one to 16. Leave that one out, set this one to 8. Oops. 4. 2. And sure enough, we get us a square wave. And it has that characteristic hollow sound of a clarinet. Well, we've talked a lot about how you can use numbers to define different waveforms in the DCO of a synthesizer. This is called additive synthesis when you add them all up like that. So now the next time somebody demos a square wave or a sawtooth wave or any other wave shape, you'll know that you're really hearing a simply a bunch of harmonic frequencies added together in various strengths.